Uh, stuff specifically with men this book alleged i'm gonna say everything's alleged says it was jb usher and little bow wow and allegedly kim and diddy had threesomes with freaking j-lo with jada pinkett look at this author chris whose true name is todd christopher goose published a book claiming to be kim porter's unpublished autobiography before her untimely death from pneumonia in 2018, the book contains startling revelations regarding events that transpired between her and Scene, P. Diddy Combs, throughout their relationship. Under the alias Jamal T. Millwood, the 59-page book, Kim's Lost Words, A Journey for Justice from the Other Side, was self-published on Amazon. Following publication, the book's author said that he composed the work with Kim's actual notes, purportedly discovered on many USB flash drives that were smuggled to him by two sources in Hollywood. The book was released last week by Chris Todd, also known as Jamal T. Millwood, after P. Diddy's arrest. It immediately went to the top of the selling list on Amazon. In its first five days on the market, the book brought in over $1 million in sales, immediately rising to the top of the Western U.S. Biographies bestseller list. Kim Porter's book begins with the following statement from the author. Kimberly Porter, better known as Kim Porter, was born on December 15, 1970, in Columbus, Georgia. The original version misspelled described her formative years in the South as ambition and regularity. As she raised her daughter, Kim's single mother, Sarah L. Porter, developed a strong sense of independence and tenacity in their modest family. Kim had always envisioned herself escaping her tiny village to do big things. Her determination to leave a lasting legacy drove her forward even as a small child, and she was praised by many for being bright and vivacious. The book goes into Kim's turbulent connection with P. Diddy in later chapters, bringing up the rumor that Jennifer Lopez approached Diddy after he was charged with shooting Natalia Rubin in the face during a 1999 nightclub shooting in New York. The biography also claims that one night, Diddy and Al B. Shore had a private meeting that Kim was not there for. Following the book's publication, the memoir's direct accusations of Diddy swiftly gained traction on social media, giving rise to a lot of rumors, false facts, and memes about seeing Diddy comms and his upcoming criminal trial. During a recent debate on a very contentious book, the author made an astonishing claim that aroused both interest and alarm. I was lucky enough to meet someone who claimed to have possession of Kim Porter's flash drive the man said. People who were acquainted with the entertainment business were quickly drawn to this discovery, particularly in light of Kim Porter's prominence. Hip-hop mogul seen Diddy Combs' ex-partner Kim has close ties to a number of well-known personalities in the entertainment and hip-hop industries. Fans were shocked by her sudden passing in 2018 and had many unanswered issues especially about her connection with Diddy and her standing in the music industry. The author continued by explaining that he was aware of the celebrity's strong relationships to Kim and Diddy since he has known them for a considerable amount of time. He made it clear that this was no typical circumstance, since the person supplying the flash disk professed to be conveying Kim's tale from the hereafter. A strange and frightening element is added to the story by the likelihood that Kim Porter left behind a thorough description of her life, relationships, and tragic death. The author acknowledged the possible risks associated with claiming ownership of Kim's purported remarks, which is why he first hesitated to come forward. Given Diddy's popularity and the potential gravity of any charges, there seemed to be a great deal of fear of reprisal from influential people in the entertainment business. However, the author's opinion evolved with the recent arrest of Shan Combs, a man whose name has been connected to the continuing inquiry against Diddy and his financial practices. The circumstances underlying Combs' detention are still unknown, 
but it seems that the author feels more secure now. I feel safer coming forward now that the federal government has finally stepped in, he added, suggesting that the anxiety and uncertainty that had previously prevented him had subsided as a result of legal steps. Although there are still many doubts about the book's veracity, it is already creating a lot of talk since it purports to be Kim Porter's uncensored life story. In response to a question on this, the author acknowledged that he was unable to ensure the correctness of the book. This acknowledgement is vital, particularly in light of the potential seriousness of the charges. Even if the flash drives were given to him by two insiders in the music business, he said he is unable to confirm every item. The book's validity is still up for debate, but the author is certain that it is real. He justified the material included in it, saying that much of it is consistent with well-known facts and speculations that have been circulating for years in the entertainment industry. The author referenced well-connected business insider Chris Todd, also known as Todd Christopher Goose, or Jamal T. Millwood, who examined the content and offered his own viewpoint in order to support his claims. Todd claims that even while it could be difficult to confirm some of the book's claims, there's a good probability the story is based on reality. His circumspect endorsement lends the book more legitimacy, especially to those who are aware of his standing in the business. It is not an easy choice to publish a book that is purportedly based on flash drives that Kim Porter left behind. Though Kim was recognized for her connections with powerful men in the business, notably Diddy, those close to her realized she had her own difficulties, experiences, and perspectives, frequently obscured by public emphasis on her love life. It would certainly have a big effect to think that she may have left behind a personal account, one that exposed the darker side of the music business, faced old traumas, or revealed secrets. This circumstance is similar to other post-mortem disclosures that have rocked influential sectors. Should the book really include quotes from Kim Porter, it has the potential to append the carefully curated personas of some of the most influential hip-hop and entertainment professionals. Due to his riches, connections, and power, Diddy in particular has been at the heart of several scandals, yet has often come out relatively unharmed. The theory that Kim Porter may communicate with us from the hereafter gives the rumors about Diddy's participation in many scandals a fresh angle. Nonetheless, there are a lot of doubters despite the book's popularity and interest. Exaggeration, incomplete facts, and made-up tales abound in the entertainment industry. These uncertainties are further exacerbated by the author's own admission that he cannot completely confirm the validity of the content. In addition, the fact that anonymous insiders in the music business served as the book's source begs further concerns about their intentions. Why are they disclosing this information at this particular time? What can they possibly gain? Is this an attempt to unearth long-buried facts? Or is it a part of a wider scheme to bring down prominent players in the industry? If the book is released, one thing is certain, it will spark a lot of discussion. It will undoubtedly grab the public's attention, regardless of whether it is praised as an accurate portrayal of Kim Porter's life or written off as a sensationalized effort to capitalize on a tragedy. This book may provide the answers to years worth of rumors and conjecture, for those who think there are hidden facts inside the entertainment business. However, those connected to Diddy and other powerful people mentioned in the book are probably going to fight back, trying to undermine the writer as well as the content. To control the story, there will probably be lawsuits, denials, and PR campaigns. Notwithstanding the result, the fact that Kim Porter's name is making a big comeback so soon after her passing guarantees that her legacy will continue to be talked about in the months to come. Despite the dangers, the author chooses to come out now, indicating that there are more interests at stake than just profit or notoriety. The substance of the book may be consistent with existing investigations, 
as shown by Shen Kolm's recent arrest and federal participation, which would lend more credence to its findings. The world will be keenly watching the plot to see whether the book delivers on its promise of shocking revelations, or if it fades into just another controversy involving the entertainment business. I'll quickly break this down for you. Through his impersonation of a black author, this white male successfully gained the system and amassed a million dollars. This is how he managed the game and the reason it was so simple for him to execute. Amazon has a feature called Kindle Direct Publishing, or TDP. With only a few hours of registration and book upload, anybody may become a published author on our platform without the need for gatekeepers or large publishing organizations. What's the finest thing, then? It doesn't cost a penny to get started. Sounds ideal for self-published writers, don't you think? Naturally, however, there is also a great deal of room for abuse. It was discovered by this person that Amazon KDP does not verify your identity. There isn't a background check or any other method to confirm your identity. He adopted a false black-sounding alias, published a book, and advertised it as a profound cultural insight. Individuals who believed they were endorsing a black writer were duped. This guy was calculating his money as they were purchasing the book, talking about it, and sharing it. These days, Amazon KDP is made to treat writers fairly. You create a book, upload it, and get paid a portion of sales. You retain the remaining portion. It's all about the marketing. This person sold a tale that resonated with the appropriate individuals. He found his target audience, and the business went off. People put up a thorough front, believing they were helping someone in their own neighborhood. The weird thing about KDP is that it's available to everyone. And if it is fantastic for legitimate freelance writers, it also makes it simple for those with malicious intent to get by. You may create a whole false character, make it seem authentic, and take advantage of unsuspecting victims. So this person spent zero startup money launched a book under a phony name, and exploited the society. He became wealthy by abusing the confidence and support that individuals have for one another. All this to a system that, despite its innovation, makes it much too simple to carry out con games like these. It's true, believe it or not. It doesn't matter who you are. All that matters is how effectively you sell the dream. If you have the correct plan and approach, you can win the game. And this guy, he did a wonderful job of selling it. Due to his ability to manipulate the system, he is now sitting on a large sum of money. It is evident from a closer inspection of the Kim Porter Books Amazon page that it was self-published. This person essentially searched the internet and pieced together tales from a variety of sites, including Tiffany Red, Jean Deal, Mark Curry, TSA Tells, Love Lady, and Make It Make Sense. He collected those fragments, condensed them into a 59-page book, added some fictitious references, and put it up on Amazon, where it is rife with errors. It's obvious that no conventional publisher was engaged because of the poor editing and lack of professionalism. He'd increased the price of the book to $224 after uploading it to Amazon KDP, most likely choosing to take the 30% cut from Amazon, which meant he would make 70% on each transaction. $154.42 is what every book sold is worth. Thus, by taking advantage of Kim Porter's terrible narrative, this individual made nearly $154,200 in a single day if he could sell only 1,000 copies. The book's terrible layout, misaligned margins, and many errors demonstrate that it wasn't written by a professional writer. If he was reputable, he would have at the very least used Grammarly or another simple grammatical checker to go over the book. This is heartbreaking and frustrating because a white guy is profiting greatly from the untimely death of Kim Porter, 
by taking advantage of black customers, making hundreds of thousands of dollars. He is taking advantage of a lady who is unable to protect herself. Kim Porter is treated as a prop in a money-making scam in this book, despite all the horrible things Diddy may or may not have done. Kim Porter allegedly experienced abuse at the hands of Diddy based on what is known. For years, there have been rumors that he violently attacked her, slapping and seizing her. However, Kim always conducted herself in public with decency, grace and respect, despite those accusations. It is abhorrent to ruin her legacy in order to make a fast money, particularly in light of the suffering she probably went through. Kim was a sophisticated, captivating lady who deserved more than to be exploited in such a vile manner. She was more than simply Diddy's ex. Are you suggesting that we are to accept this 59 pages of grammatically faulty garbage that this intelligent, articulate black intern at Uptown, Kim Porter, gave us? Kim Porter could spell, even if this so-called book was based on her notes. Furthermore, the assertion made by the book's author in Chapter 5 that Diddy signed Mary J. Blige was a grave error. Kim Porter should be aware that Mary J. Blige was never signed to Bad Boy. Here's some shocking news. I won't go into all the other obvious mistakes just now. That is only one. I can't advise you what to do right now, but if I were you, I would return the book. This cultural vulture is attempting to take advantage of Kim Porter's legacy in order to con others, particularly black people. It's just another instance of a white guy taking advantage of black culture to get easy money. I can guarantee you that this isn't the book Kim Porter was working on, regardless of whether Al B. Shore recommended it or not. To those who may be thinking, but I read the book and it contains real facts. The answer is yes, indeed. Any interview Kim ever gave with Essence or other publications while she was alive would have those details. Every skilled liar is aware that you need to combine some truth with your lies in order to sell them. To be clear, if this guy was genuine and had really utilized Kim's original notes, he would have at the very least donated a portion of the book's sales to her children. Was that what he did? Nope. He is keeping all of the cash for himself. I would also return this book for that reason. It's all nonsense, and at a time when Diddy's actual victims are attempting to seek justice, it merely serves to cloud the situation with falsehoods. Consider this. After Diddy's attorneys disprove this book, it will be simpler for them to assert that the actual victims are also lying. And before someone says I'm supporting Diddy, you should know that I take aim at Diddy like everyone else on this channel. I admire hip hop and its culture, however, and I'm not going to fall for this snake oil salesman's con. Tell me your thoughts on Kim's lost words. A Journey for Justice from the Other Side, a book attributed to Kim Porter that was written by Chris Todd, also known as Todd Christopher Goose, Eka. Jamal T. Midwood. What is your opinion? Do you believe it to be false or real? If you purchased the book, would you be keeping it or returning it, as many others have done? Please share your thoughts in the comments section. Also, don't forget to like, subscribe, and tell your friends about this video.